Hi, my lovelies. So you might not know this about me, but over the last few months, I finally committed to reading the Harry Potter books. Now, I had already seen all the movies, but I had never read the books. And of course, they were just as magical as I thought they would be. So today, I was totally inspired to create a little Harry Potter feast for you. We are going to be making some pumpkin pasties, obviously a staple on the Hogwarts Express. We're also going to be making Harry's favorite treat, a treacle tart. And finally, we're going to wrap things up with some warm and cozy hot butterbeer. All of these tasty treats come together with a mere flick of a wand. They're super simple to make and of course, super delicious. We're getting started today with some pumpkin pasties. We're gonna start by mixing up our pumpkin filling. For this, I'm using some pumpkin puree and mixing it up with some brown sugar, a little bit of vanilla extract, and some beautiful spices. I've got some cinnamon and some nutmeg and just a little sprinkle of cloves. I'm gonna mix all of that yumminess together until it's well combined and then I'm going to set it aside and get to work on cutting out my pie crust. For this recipe, I'm actually using some store-bought pie crust, but hey, if you are a wizard in the kitchen, you go right ahead and make your own. I'm making little half moon shapes. So what I'm using is the top of a tart tin. It's got a pretty little scalloped edge, which is what I love. But if you don't have these on hand, it's totally fine. You can definitely use the edge of a bowl or a cup to do the same thing. Once you've got your circles cut out, you're just gonna arrange them on a parchment lined baking sheet. And then you're going to scoop a tablespoon or so of our pumpkin filling into the center of each of our circles. And then it's time to seal these babies. To do that, I'm just gonna use a little bit of water on the tip of my finger and run it along the edge of my circles. I'm going to fold my pastry over and seal the edges. And then I'm just going to take a sharp knife to create a few small vents. To make sure these get nice and golden brown while baking, I'm adding just a little bit of egg wash to the top of each. I do this just by beating an egg and then applying it with a pastry brush. And it's as simple as that. Into the oven these go at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for between 20 and 25 minutes. You'll know they're ready because they'll be nice and crispy and golden. These little delights are oh so portable and great for enjoying on your way to school, whether you're taking the Hogwarts Express there or not. Next up, we are making Harry's dessert of choice, a classic treacle tart. For this tart, I'm getting started once again with some store-bought pie crust. I've got a lovely tart pan with a removable bottom. I always find those are the easiest to work with. And all I'm going to do is place my pie crust into my tart pan and then gently press it up the sides. Then I'm just going to remove my excess dough and prepare this for baking. So I'm just gonna place a piece of parchment paper on the top of my pie crust, and then I'm going to weigh it down with some dried beans. Now this may seem a little peculiar to some of you, but these are what we call pie weights. The idea here is to prevent any sort of bubbling or air pockets from forming. So I've got my oven preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and all I'm going to do is put my pie crust into the oven for about 15 minutes or so, just to give it a head start, and then I'm going to get to work on my treacle filling. So I've got a small saucepan on the stove, and to that I'm going to add my golden syrup. If you're not familiar with golden syrup, you can usually find it in most supermarkets where the corn syrup and the maple syrup are. If you're having trouble finding it, you can also locate it at a British specialty store, or I have left a link in the description box below. I'm heating my golden syrup over medium low heat. I don't wanna actually cook it, I just want to basically make it nice and soft and runny and easy to work with. After two or three minutes, I'm going to add some heavy cream, a few tablespoons of butter, and the zest and juice of one small lemon. Once everything has come together and that butter is all melted, we are going to stir in our breadcrumbs. Now this may sound a little peculiar, but I can assure you the final result is totally delicious. Now that the pie crust is out of the oven, I'm going to remove the dried beans and pour in my delicious filling. Now you could bake this pie just as it is, but if you wanna make it extra fancy, go ahead and create a lattice top. Now to do that, I'm simply taking a second pie crust and using a pizza cutter to cut it into strips. Then I'm simply going to arrange my strips in a lattice pattern on the top of my pie, cut off the excess, brush it with some egg wash, and pop it back into the oven for between 15 or 20 minutes or until the pie is totally set. 
This yumminess is simply divine when served with a little whipped cream or some ice cream, or even better, when washed down with some hot butter beer. Now I wanna warn you, this next recipe is not for the weak at heart. It is loaded with lots and lots of sugar. So, you know, enjoy in moderation. I've got my cauldron fired up on the stove and to that I'm adding equal parts sweetened condensed milk and butterscotch topping. If you're looking for butterscotch topping in your supermarket, you can usually find it where all of the tasty Sunday toppings are. Yum. We're also going to add a good heaping helping of butter because it is butter beer after all. Now I'm using salted butter because I honestly think with this much sugar you need a little bit of saltiness to offset the whole thing. If you have unsalted butter, then go ahead and add a few sprinkles of salt to this. You're gonna whisk all of that yumminess together until it's nice and smooth and that butter is all melted. And then it's time to add the beer. In this case, we're actually using vanilla flavored cream soda. Once again, this is sugar on top of sugar on top of sugar with a little bit of fat stirred in, but it's really delicious. <laughs> All you're gonna wanna do is mix that up until everything's heated through and then it is ready to serve. I like topping it with a good dollop of whipped cream and a sprinkle of nutmeg for good measure. If you wanted to take this recipe way over the top though, you could also top this with marshmallow fluff. That would be incredible. Just don't tell your parents it was me who suggested it. I hope you guys had as much fun watching this as I had making it and that you'll give some of these tasty creations a try in your very own kitchens. Also, if there are any great Harry Potter inspired recipes that you love, be sure to leave them in the description box below because I'd love to make another version of this video with all new recipes. I think it would be a lot of fun. Finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.